All right. How's everybody doing today? Oh, come on. Can we put our hands together and just give some gratitude to our worship teams and to our dream team members that serve the house so faithfully? And most importantly, come on, to Jesus who gave his life for us. Isn't it good to be together in the house of God? We are starting a brand new series today called Oil Change. And really, it is going to be a series on the Holy Spirit and His work in our life. And I'm so excited to dive into that. Come on, while the world is talking about every evil spirit and a wicked thing that's going on, we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit and uh, the, the Spirit of God that has been poured out for each one of us. And I could not be more excited about diving into this. Uh, if you guys were not here to catch our homecoming series, I really do hope that you jump back online. Online family, if you missed that, you can go back to our website or to our YouTube channel and catch all of those, all three of them, I should say. It was a short series, but man, what a deep dive into the Father heart of God. And so I really want to encourage you, if you missed that, go back and listen to them. Don't miss a single one, because I think we, we were able to unpack the Father's heart really to come back home to his house in such a powerful way. I want you to grab your Bibles and turn with me to John chapter 7 today. John chapter 7. We're going to dive into a few passages of Scripture. If you're new to this church, just know that we love the Bible. Come on, somebody. And uh, uh, our, the, any sermon that's preached here is preached out of the Bible. And we're going to kind of bounce around a little bit today. We're not going to stick to one passage. But John chapter 7, starting in verse 37, is going to be my main text that we jump off of. But I'm going to weave in quite a bit of Scripture to lay the foundation for this series today. And really my heart is that over the next month, the month of October, as we lean in to who the Holy Spirit is, the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives, what he's been poured out into our hearts in this world to do, um, that man, our walk with God would just explode and uh, that your spiritual life would just catch on fire in a fresh way. So John chapter seven, starting in verse 37, shout yes when you find it. All right. John chapter seven. Starting in verse 37, we're going to read this together. The Bible says, On the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds. Now, I just want you to picture this. It's a key moment in the party. Okay, The Jewish people, they really knew how to party. This wasn't like a four-hour thing. This was multiple days of celebration. He's at the peak moment, All right, what it's all been building to. And Jesus stands up and he just shouts into the crowd, okay? Jesus was that guy. Come on. And uh, this is what he says. Anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the Scriptures declare, rivers of living water will flow from his heart. And when he said living water, he was speaking of the Spirit who would be, everybody say would be, who would be given to everyone, everybody say everyone, Everyone. believing in him. But the Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet entered into his glory. Would you pray with me? And we're going to dive right into the Bible. This is going to be good today. Can you feel it? All right, I feel faith in the room. Lord, we love you. We're so thankful for your incredible church, this incredible time to be here for our online family joining us right now. I pray for open, ready hearts, God, to receive your word, to receive a working of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray right now for spiritual ears to hear what you would speak to each and every one of us. Only you can take a message and break it down individually and speak each to each and every one of us the way we need to hear. So build us up. May we be bigger, better, stronger, and more like Jesus when we leave today. And we ask in your mighty name, amen. Amen. Hey, have you guys ever heard the saying, what you don't know can't hurt you? I don't know who made that up, but they were wrong. Okay? They lied to you. (laughs) They lied to you. And they lied to me. You know, I was thinking this week of all the times what I didn't know has hurt me. (laughs) There's so many. Uh, But one of the things that I I I thought of, um, you know, I've always been kind of an adrenaline junkie um, since I was really little. 
First bone that I broke, I think I was six years old, I rode my my mountain bike off of a five-foot loading ramp they used to load semis. And I didn't know all the high school kids on the BMXs, you know, I didn't know you had to pull up and do all that stuff. And so I rode my like 50-pound huffy, you know, just boom, you know, snap my shoulder blade, broke the growth plate in my arm. It didn't slow it down though, amen? Um, But you know, over my life, I've always been a little bit of an adrenaline junkie. And when my youngest son was born, I was driving a two-door yellow coupe, little sports car, um, that could not fit a car seat in the back seat. You know, the back seat was more like for just storage, you know, not for kids. And so I had to get a dad mobile and I bought a Subaru WRX. It was bright blue with a big, you know, wing on the back. It had a, it had a turbo and it was a stage two turbo with three inch turbo back exhaust off that. I mean, it was amazing. That thing was awesome, but it was a four door sedan. Come on dads, where you at? It was a dad mobile, but it was a good one. You know what I mean? And, uh, and I learned some things owning this car. It was an older one. It was a 2007. So it was a few years old when I bought it. But I had a pretty good understanding of a few of the systems on this car. You know, we, we really paid attention to the fuel system. I had tuned it and, and all these things with the turbo. So man, the fuel system, I had it all dialed in and, you know, it had an intercooler and all these things to keep the turbo and the engine cool and all of those things. So man, that cool. But I learned that there are more than two important systems in a car. It's, 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 really, it's really not enough to have the coolant system figured out, although that's important. It really is. It's really not enough to have the fuel system figured out, although if it's not cool, that thing's going to burn up. I'm going to be in trouble. Okay, so I mean, I, I, I really did. I had it dialed in. That thing never overheated. It was doing really, really well. I, I always ran the right gas, premium fuel, all those different things, I had it dialed in. But I missed a very important third system in my vehicle, and that was the oil system. And what I did not realize was that my car that was incredibly dialed in in the fuel category, all right, was incredibly dialed in in the coolant category. What I did not pay close enough attention to was the fact that it drank oil like a 50 year old alcoholic. Come on, somebody. (laughs) This, this thing drank oil and I started having issues with it. My valves started giving me fits. All kinds of things started to happen. I started losing power and dealing with trouble before you knew it. My engine was making a sound that was not that amazing turbo, uh, you know, release valve. It was not that purr. It was more like a like a knocking noise, if you get what I'm saying. And I went to check the oil on it, and I actually realized that there was no oil. Um, At least none that my dipstick could find, and I tried really hard. And then when I went to fill it up, I realized there was literally no oil. And, uh, you know, it was, I was able to get some oil back in that thing and drove it for a while. But I'm telling you, it was pretty much a downhill slide from there. Come on, somebody. And I ended up putting so much money into that thing. It was ridiculous. It was probably one of the worst financial decisions I've ever made in my entire life. And so I'm not saying I'm never going to own a turbo again, but I'm never going to own a car that was a used turbo. Come on, somebody. Um, And I'm going to take a lot better care of not just two thirds of the systems of my car. I'm going to pay really close attention to all three of the very important systems that my car has. And you know, one of the things that I believe that the local church is struggling with today in the day and age that we live in is that we are super familiar and super comfortable with two thirds of the Godhead. You know, we've been singing songs for thousands of years about the Holy Trinity. We sing the songs, you know. We have the liturgy down. Most of us, you know, would, would say, yeah, we, we understand that, that God has expressed himself in three persons. But if we were really honest and we did a deep dive in our own soul, I think many Christians would arrive at the conclusion that they are pretty comfortable with two thirds 
of the Godhead. Two thirds of this thing we know as the Trinity, but there's another third of the Godhead that we're just kind of like, well, I don't, you know, you know, I, I don't know. And so really what I feel like my assignment is to do over this next month is to help familiarize our church, to help bring a comfort level and an understanding, maybe even an experience with not just the two thirds of the Godhead that we are all so comfortable with, but to bring some comfort and information to lead us to a place of experience with the Holy Spirit. Listen, I'm grateful for the Word of God. It is the final authority. We are a Bible church. We believe it from the front all the way to the back. We preach from it, build our lives on it, believe it's inspired, every single word in it, breathed from the very breath of God. We believe that. But God did not come as Father, Son, and Holy Bible. He came as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I love the Father. We spent a whole series talking about the Father's heart in in homecoming. I love the Son. There's no one as beautiful as Jesus. I love that God loved us enough to come for us. That He didn't stay a God that was far away, but He came as Emmanuel, born supernaturally, born of a virgin, immaculate conception, born lowly, lived in obscurity for 30 years of His life, only to have one of the most dynamic ministries that has ever shaken the earth today, and over three years set in motion a movement that we are still riding the wave of today. Come on, somebody. Most importantly, lived a sinless life laid His very life down for us on the cross, paid the price for our sins, shortcomings, failures, whatever you want to call it, Jesus paid for our sin. And on that cross, He said, it is finished. What was finished? His job. And we show up in this passage today and what Jesus is doing really is He is introducing us and preparing the people of that day for the Holy Spirit. That's what he's doing. He's beginning to prepare them. Now listen, maybe you went to one of those churches growing up that was a Holy Ghost church and people were just wild and lost their minds. There are times when I almost feel like I have to apologize on behalf of the body of Christ, you know, like um, maybe you've got that weird family member that's just weird. And then they blame it on the Holy Spirit. You know, she's, well, that's just the Holy Ghost. No, you're a weirdo. Okay? You're just weird. Don't blame it on God. Like, stop being so weird. Now listen, the Holy Spirit is God. He's not like you. He's not like me. He's like God. He's like Him. But don't blame God for the weird, fleshly weirdisms of men. And listen, I don't blame some of you. Some of you got messed up in a church. Some of you have experienced some wild stuff. Some of you have some weird family. Some people did weird things to you and then blamed it on God. Listen, on behalf of the body of Christ, I'm so sorry. But we can't afford to throw the baby out with the bathwater. We can't afford to throw the Holy Spirit out with your weird Uncle Pete. We can't afford to do that because trying to live your life without the Holy Spirit is like trying to run your car on two-thirds of its systems. You won't have the power to do what God's called you to do. You won't have the oil to do what God's called you to be. You can't be who God's called you to be without the Holy Spirit at work in your life. If you believe it, shout amen. Amen. We've got to have a walk with God. Listen, it's, this is vital to me because nothing has been more important to me than my connection with the Holy Spirit. There's nothing more important in my day to day life. And so in John chapter seven, Jesus literally interrupts the party and begins yelling that through him, we're going to have access to the Holy Spirit who is yet to come. I want to give you a few things to write down today and we're going to dive into this text a little deeper, but the first thing I'd like you to write down is this. The Holy Spirit should not be a stranger. The Holy Spirit should not be a stranger. You know, Jesus was talking about not just something. 
that was out there somewhere. Jesus was talking about someone. It's important that we understand that the Holy Spirit of God is not just something that was foreign to these people. He was introducing a person that they had not yet met. See, in John 7, 39, it says, when he said living water, he was speaking of the Spirit who would be given to everyone believing in him. But the Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet entered into his glory. You know, early manuscripts of this passage, as I studied this out um, with a lot of detail, early manuscripts actually read this way. They said, as of yet, there was no Holy Spirit. So let me say it this way. At this point, the Spirit was a stranger to those people. The Spirit was a stranger. I would even say that they were so far removed from God and His heart that they didn't even recognize the Son for the most part. And now the Son that they didn't even recognize as the Son of God is talking to them about somebody else already. He's saying, listen, we're gonna, there's gonna be a Spirit that's going to come. And rivers of living water will flow out of your life. He was introducing and beginning to mention the third member of the Trinity. God, the Holy Spirit. So I just want to partner with Jesus today. And do something similar that Jesus did all those years ago. And I just want to introduce you. Not just to the Father and not just to the Son. But I want to introduce you to the Holy Spirit of God. Surprise! God is not just Father. Surprise, God is not just Son. God is Spirit. Come on, somebody. If I had to give today's message a title, I would call it, Hello, my name is Holy Spirit. I would call Him the forgotten member of the Godhead. And I never want this to be said about Christian Faith Center, that we forgot the Holy Spirit. We are a Holy Spirit people. Matter of fact, Romans is clear that you can't even be a Christian if the Holy Spirit has not been poured out into your heart. So listen, as much as I I feel like most of the church needs an introduction, maybe not this room. You guys, first service, you're the holy ones. Online family, I feel some faith. I get it. You guys are best buds with the Holy Spirit. But by and large, I feel like today, The Holy Spirit is trying to partner with believers in this hour. He's trying to partner with ministries in this hour. And unless we stop being a stranger to the Spirit, we are never going to accomplish what God wants us to accomplish. John chapter 14, I want to read these together. John chapter 14, starting in verse 15, we'll read through 18. Jesus says this, he says, If you love me, obey my commandments. Now listen to this. And I will ask the Father... And he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the what? Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because, listen, it is neither looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But listen to what he says. But you know him. Why? Because he lives with you now and will later be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. I will not abandon you. I will come to you. How is he going to come? By the Holy Spirit. He's saying, I'm going to make sure that the Father sends to you an advocate. Look what Jesus is saying. He's saying the world doesn't know the Holy Spirit. Why? This is critical. Because it's not looking for him, nor does it know him. There's so, I gotta be careful. There, there is, if you will begin looking for the Holy Spirit, my God, you will find Him. You know, Jesus said, look and you will seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. The kingdom is all about seeking. What you look for is so important, friends. If you look for negative and critical and dysfunction, baby, you're going to find it. But if you look for good, if you look for God, if you seek for the Holy Spirit, oh man, you're going to find Him. He does not delight in hiding. He loves to be found. But Jesus is saying, the world, it doesn't know Him. Why? Because it's not looking for Him. Oh, it's looking for every other spirit. It's looking for every other form of demonic paganry and witchcraft, and especially in October. Come on, everybody. Even half the people in the church got a demon hanging from their front porch. And it's like, 
We're looking for every other spirit. And we're afraid to talk about the Holy Spirit. Not a Christian faith center. We're going to elevate God. We're going to love every member of the Godhead. Come on, somebody. He's been given to us. And Jesus said He is our advocate. You know, I've traveled the nation ministering at churches, taking part in conferences. And my favorite thing is when the Holy Spirit shows up. You know, the church can be totally different. It can be wood pews. It can be gospel music. It can be Gaither style. Come on. It can be, it can be any, but see, for me, what makes a church feel like home is not the music style. It's not how the pastor preaches. Well, is he loud or is he demonstrative? Is he more of a teacher? Is he more of a this? Is he, well, what's the worship like? Is the worship leader too young? Is his pants too tight? Is his hair too crazy? Is the music too loud? Is any of these things? What I look for is this. Is God here? It's the Holy Spirit in the house. And you know, as I've traveled to many, many different churches, many different expressions of the body of Christ, almost without fail, there's a couple where, you know what I'm saying, but almost without fail, the same presence of the Holy Spirit descends in that place. And I'm home. I'm home. It's the same Spirit of God that is reaching people in Kenya, that is reaching you here. It is the same Spirit of God building people in the Nazarene church as they are building people in this church. It's the same Spirit that is at work in the lives of the body of Christ. This is why we can't afford to be tribal and territorial and against each other. I pray blessing over every local church. I pray blessing over every Bible preaching pastor. I pray blessing over every church going Christian. Why? Because the same Holy Spirit is at work in their life. The same Holy Spirit is leading them into the mission of Jesus. We are a part of the same family of God. If you believe it, shout amen. We will be a church that blesses other churches. We will be a church that supports other churches. Why? Because it's the same Holy Spirit at work in all of us. It's the same Holy Spirit. Totally different churches, people, styles, location, ages, but the same Spirit of God. Friends, He should not, He cannot be a stranger to us. We have to know this advocate that Jesus told us we would have. Number two, I want you to write this down. The Holy Spirit is not a power. He is a person of the Godhead. I'm just laying some foundation. I'm bringing some theological foundation today to who the Holy Spirit is in our life. Listen, God the Father, He is God. God the Son, He is God. Just making sure we realize that. But God the Holy Spirit, He is He's God. Come on now. So important that we understand that they are God. Listen, the Father is not more God than the Son. And the Son is not more God than the Spirit. They are three in one. All the persons of the Godhead are God. It's the same God, but a different expression. Matter of fact, matter of fact, I would submit to you that this is a concept we all understand, but maybe we don't translate into theology very well. You know, I have here H2O, water. Everything I have on this table is the same. It is all at its core the same substance. It is one substance, but can be expressed differently, given a different purpose, a different climate, a different season. What is liquid in one season, come on, it's about to be fall in Idaho, can I get an amen? What is Liquid in one season can be solid in another. Which one is more water? Oh, they're the same. If you were to analyze these at their core, these are not different substances. They are only different expressions. They are the same thing. The Father set apart and holy. The Father 
We are taught in Scripture, no one has ever seen the Father except the one who came from the Father. He is set apart. He is holy. The Son, the physical manifestation of God. Emmanuel, God with us. Not half God, half man. Not God's stepson. Come on, somebody. He was all God. Miraculous conception. God wrapped in flesh. Born of a child. From a virgin. Raised. Lived a sinless life. 30 years in near obscurity. And yet would pay the price for my sin and yours. The Bible teaches us He's the very image. The very expression of the Godhead. And in Him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Can I get an amen? He is the Son. He is Jesus Christ. The Anointed One. Same God. And yet for most of us, we're comfortable with the Father being God. We are comfortable with the Son being God. But we struggle so bad with the third expression of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit. We struggle with this God that has been poured out for us. How many know God? How many know still God? How many know still God? God the Father, all God. God the Son, all God. God the Spirit. Come on, somebody. All God. If you believe it, shout amen for just a moment. For our God that has been given to us. He's not less. He's the same God expressed differently. One of the most vital reasons that we need to get a knowledge and a relationship with the Holy Spirit is that He is the God that we are interacting with right now. This is important for us to understand. Theologically, we are living in the age of not just grace, but the age of the Spirit of God. The Bible is very clear that Jesus, come on, resurrected bodily from the dead, revealed Himself to many people, performed miracles, and then ascended back to the right hand of who? The Father. And sent us who? The Holy Spirit. So God, who chose to express Himself as the Father in times of old, who expressed Himself as the Son in the New Testament Gospels, is now expressing Himself as the Holy Spirit in the age that we are living in. This is important because as we interact with God in our day-to-day life, He's the one we're interacting with the most. I would go so far as to say the Spirit of God is the most influential person of the Godhead that is working in your life today. God the Father, He's not the most influential person of the Godhead. Listen, He did His part. And I would say this, and you can write this down. The Father, He was provider. He made all things. He created everything we need. He sent His Son Jesus to be the payment for our sin. He provided everything. And then rested. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Bible says he rested on the seventh day from his work. Provided. God the Son. You can write this down. He's done his part too and laid his life down on the cross and three days later rose from the dead. He ascended to the right hand of the Father. And now he is at the right hand of the Father in heaven. What was the last thing that Jesus said on the cross? It is... What was finished? His function. His purpose was clear. He came to lay His life down and be an offering for our sin. To pay the price for our sin. He died once and for all to pay the price of all sin, past, present, and future. The blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross is not like the blood of the Old Testament goats and lambs and and bulls and things that had to be shed over and over again. He paid the price once for all. Nobody is a better sinner than Jesus is a Savior. Can I get an amen? He paid the price. His job is done. He ascended back to the right hand of the Father. And He's been very clear. One day, He will come back again. Very different than He came the first time. If you believe that, shout amen. Amen. 
Once the Son of God went back to heaven, he was very clear that he tagged in God the Holy Spirit. Listen to John 16, 5 and 6. But now I am going away to the one who sent me. This is Jesus, by the way. This is just the Bible. John 16, 5 through 7. But now I am going away to the one who sent me. And not one of you is asking where I'm going. Instead, you grieve because of what I've told you. Now catch this. But in fact, it is so bad for you that I'm leaving. Oh wait, that's not what the Bible says at all. Jesus said, it's best for you that I go away. Because if I don't, the Advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send Him to you. That's Jesus. This isn't mysterious, telescopic prophecy that's hard to interpret. This is very clear language from Jesus. I am going back to the One who sent me the father who provided atonement for you in me i'm going back to him and when i do i'm sending to you the advocate that word advocate in the greek is paraclete what it means is a helper and a comforter the best description of paraclete is helper i want you to write this down god the holy spirit is our helper he is our helper See, many do not believe in the Holy Spirit and we wonder why we feel disconnected from God. Because if you don't believe in the Holy Spirit, then you kind of are. Because Jesus is a long ways up there. Come on, somebody. When you pray, Jesus does not get up off the throne in resurrected bodily form and run into your living room invisible. When you sense the, the God, the Holy Spirit touching you, it's not Jesus. If Jesus walks in the back doors of these services... Guys, this place is about to go off and a lot of us are about to go up. Come on, somebody. I'm just telling you. Theologically, it is not accurate to believe that Jesus is appearing to all of us all the time. Now, is he appearing to some people? Yes. He's, he's, people are coming to faith in Jesus by the droves, especially the Muslim populations. They're having dreams and visions of Jesus, but Jesus is not walking the streets of Nampa, Idaho today. The chances are. But you know who is at work in the lives and hearts? God, the Holy Spirit. The expression of God that is active in the world right now is Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in you. He is with you. He speaks to you. He surrounds you with His presence. He is here to help you. Do you need help? It is the Holy Spirit that's at work in your life. Are you struggling today? The Holy Spirit wants to work in your life. Do you need salvation today? It is the Holy Spirit that is revealing Jesus, the Son, who gave His life for you. Nobody gets saved without the Holy Spirit working in their life. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is at work in this world, in the church, and in your life. Romans 8 tells us that you can't even be a Christian if the Holy Spirit is not in you. We are all together a dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in you. Listen, I don't just need the help of the Holy Spirit when I'm worshiping in church. I need the help of the Holy Spirit to go to Walmart. Come on, somebody. I need God every day. I need God every day. Not just God that I can read about in Scripture. Not just God that, 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 that I can imagine in my mind. I need God that I can know now. I need God that can work in my life now. I need a God that's powerful to move in my life now. I don't want my faith to be relegated to a distant belief in a God that I can only read about. You know, Paul, he said this. He said, may you may you encounter the love of God, though it is too great for you to understand fully. Your imagination is only so great. But God is greater still. There is a God that wants to know you. There's a God that wants you to know Him. He's been poured out, as Jesus said, as the advocate advocate or the helper for me and for you. The Holy Spirit wants to work in your life. I need God, the Spirit, in my everyday life. I need Him in my conversations. I need Him in my discussions. I need Him in my heart. I need Him in my soul. I need Him working in my mind, in my marriage. I need the Holy Spirit to work in my children. I need the Holy Spirit to invade every arena of my life. And I would submit, whether you will acknowledge it or not, you do too. You need God to invade your situation. You need God to invade your life. You need God to 
invade your marriage and your children and the situations you're fighting at work. You need God to teach you and counsel you and comfort you. And guess what? Every one of those things are names for the Holy Spirit. He is counselor. He is teacher. He is comforter. He is all present with everyone all the time. He is with you. He is the promise of Jesus to me and to you that we would not be forsaken by God, but that he would come to us and be with us always. If you believe it, come on, give God a shout of praise and magnify the Holy Spirit. He's not lesser. He is with us. He's with us. Romans 8, 11 says the spirit of God. Listen to this. This is, this will blow your mind. The spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by this same spirit that is within you. You do not have a junior or a B grade Holy Spirit living in you. There is not like Holy Spirit that interacted with Jesus and then like Holy Spirit that interacts with us. There is one spirit, one God, one spirit. Come on, somebody that works in all of us, moving in all of us teaching all of us, comforting all of us, building all of us, helping all of us, healing all of us, empowering all of us, with all of us. This is how God could say that He puts the lonely in families, that He's a comfort to widows and orphans, that He'll comfort you in your grieving in your time of need. Listen, on earth, Jesus was limited to one place one time. Now, he had supernatural ability after he was raised from the dead. He could go back and forth from heaven into earth. He could walk through walls. Come on, somebody. How many know when we die and get resurrected later, we're going to get an upgrade? The natural limitations on this body are going away. I want to be like Jesus. Come on. But right now, in this time and in this place, and I believe now more than ever, Jesus is coming back again soon. But I'm just telling you, right now, as Jesus is getting ready and making a place for us like he promised, he has given us the spirit. We are not people without a God. We are not people without a presence. We are not people without God. We have God with us. He is God with us. Jesus was God with us in the flesh. Come on, but the Holy Spirit is God with us in spirit. He is with you all the time. He is with you always in all places, everywhere you go, everything you're going through. He's with you. This is the God. You have the same God, God the Holy Spirit living in you. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead. The same power that worked miracles through Jesus. The same God that's been at work in the church now for over 2,000 years is working in you. You did not get a downgrade. And I just feel like God sent me here to have a message for America that we did not get a downgraded God. We have been given the same Spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead. The same Spirit of God that birthed the early church over 2,000 years ago. The same God, the Holy Spirit, that led so many to salvation that now billions of people are followers of Jesus. The same God that empowered people to raise people from the dead, to lay hands on the sick and see them recover, to see radical life transformation. People like the Apostle Paul that were murderers and far from God encountered Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit, their lives turned upside down and they did great things for the kingdom of God. And I'm here to tell you, you're not too far gone that the Holy Spirit can't get a hold of your life and so turn you around that you could be a world shaker for God. Oh God, if you believe it, shout amen. We need to catch a revelation that we are not abandoned. COVID may be crazy, but Holy Spirit is greater. The government might be crazy, but the Holy Spirit is greater. Nothing is bigger than our God. He's with us. He's with us. I got to hurry and just get these because listen, write this down. We need to open our lives up to the helper. We need to open our lives up to the helper. He wants to help you. He wants to be with you. This is a crazy statement, Jesus said, but in fact, it's best for you that I go because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I'll send him to you. Same God, different expression. There was a time, and you can read about it in the scriptures, that the Father was at work, set apart, distant, 
hidden by fire and clouds. There was a time that the Son was born into this earth. Most people missed Him, but a lot didn't. And He gave His life for me and you. And He ascended back to the right hand of the Father and He poured out the Advocate for us today. Now God the Spirit is at work in the world until the Son comes to take His people home again. So how do we open our lives to more of God the Holy Spirit? I just want to give you a couple things. Can you write them down fast? I'm out of time, but I want to get this to you. First of all, acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit each and every morning. Jesus said, I'm with you always. Listen, God has not forsaken you and abandoned you. You do not have to wake up with Jesus holding your hand to know that God is with you. God the Holy Spirit is in you. And every day you wake up and you're not who you were before is proof that the Spirit of God is still in you. He's changing you, molding you, working out grace in your life, making you more like Jesus. He's helping you, healing you, comforting you. He's there. I like to wake up every morning, flip my legs over the side of the bed, just say, Holy Spirit, I'm so excited to do today with you. Thank you that you're with me. Thank you that your anointing is on my life. Thank you that I don't have to go anywhere alone, but you are with me, counseling me, comforting me, teaching me today. I'm not an orphan. I have God living in me. Acknowledge his presence. Two, ask the Holy Spirit when you need help. So many times we deal with problems, but we don't ever just stop and say, Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, help me. There are times when I'm struggling, whatever it is, anger, frustration, temptation, I'll just say, Holy Spirit. Why? Because it just acknowledges Him. It just acknowledges Him. You know, the Scriptures say, if we'll exalt Jesus, He'll draw people to Himself. Well, guess what? If you'll exalt the Holy Spirit in your life, He'll show up in a big way. I'll tell you what, you know what's not greater than the Holy Spirit? Your temptation, your struggle, your trial, whatever you're dealing with. He'll show up and be a strength to you. My final thing, write this down. This is good. Develop an honor for the presence of the Holy Spirit. An honor. Honor means to give weight to, to give precedent to, to give someone or something what it is due. That's what honor means. We want to be a people that honor the Holy Spirit and His presence in our life. Amen? And that just means to recognize when He's here. You know, my greatest encounters with the Holy Spirit have not even been in a church service. They've been in an office, in a car, in a ride where I just acknowledged the presence of the Holy Spirit in my time of need and the Holy Spirit would fill that place and fill my life and strengthen me in new and fresh ways because He is not limited to the four walls of this church. He is with you everywhere you go.